There's been a, a really interesting trend that's been happening really for about the last 80 years, and that relates to the learning theories that we're basing our educational system on and how those learning theories actually view the process or the components of learning. For example, we have, since earliest recorded history, had a desire to externalize our thoughts. If you look at some of the writings of uh, you know, Wittgenstein as an example, he places uh, heavy emphasis on language games and essentially states that really there aren't philosophical problems, so to speak, that we're dealing primarily with language problems or that there really can't be any private language, that our need to externalize is, is so great that we can't really have meaningful private dialogue. Whether one agrees with that or not, I think there's an important concept being presented, which is we ourselves need to externalize our thoughts in order for us to have the ability to connect with other individuals. Vygotsky, as another example, has put forward the same notion. He, he's made the statement that our language essentially gives birth to our thoughts. So whether we're dealing with things like a language which where we externalize our, our own thoughts or whether we externalize our thoughts through symbols, maybe we might externalize them through some type of art form, but regardless of the exact perspective that we're using to externalize our thoughts, the key point is that as human beings, we desire or we crave the ability to externalize what's in our heads. Uh, whatever that reason is for is a certain, well beyond my own understanding. But there is a strong history of individuals really asserting that our desire to present ourselves in social spaces is incredibly strong. Now, this development or this aspect of humanity is actually fairly substantially in conflict with many of the learning theories that we have established much of our educational system on. Consider, for example, behaviorism, which is a fairly standard learning theory, but uh, it presents basically our minds a black box. We don't know what goes on inside, and it's really just the behavior that we're concerned with. Or cognitivism, or constructivism, where essentially either cognitivism, information processing happens in our mind, or through constructivism, where the act of assigning meaning happens in our mind. But those concepts are actually at odds with our desire to externalize if anything, we need to reverse the image and look at it from the outside instead of from the inside, where learning and the act of knowledge creation is a function of a network, where it is the aggregation of activities of many individuals that generates meaningful or useless, uh, useful knowledge. So our challenge then as educators is finding a way to value and to foster that human need that we have to be expressive about our ideas and to focus less on trying to bring knowledge into the mind of a person and more on developing the skills of our learners so that they're able to go out in fairly complex knowledge environments today and function in a distributed manner. Maybe it's a matter of them being able to dialogue with experts from around the world. Maybe it's as simple as being able to work well with co-workers or to work well with individuals or learners within their own course. But to begin to see the power of connecting in an external fashion really requires that we rethink and rewrite much of how we're currently conceiving learning and knowledge within our academic settings. So this is a fairly exciting time to be involved in education because these are opportunities that we'll have the, op we'll have the ability to tackle within our own lifetime and to try and create something that's more meaningful and more aligned with just the nature of the, the workplace or the nature of the society that our learners are going to enter within the next several years.